My special guest and hometown hero is here today, um, Marquetta Dickens. She was very successful at Tarbell High. She went to play at NC State. She also played professional basketball as well. And now she's on a new journey. She's coaching. I'm going to dig into her mind today and see how she looks at things. So, Marquetta, pretty much tell everybody the viewers about you and all your achievements. Um, as Like you said, I, I started off at Tarbell High. Uh, from there... I was the, well, my record was broken, finally. <laughs> uh, so I led the Twin Counties in scoring. Uh, and also at Tarver High, uh, you know, I went to state championships and things like that. Player of the year, three years in a row for the conference. Uh, gosh, high school was so long ago. <laughs> uh, my, I, mean, I guess the biggest accomplishments on the high school level was having my jersey retired and um, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, those were, I would say, my biggest two accomplishments were at high school level. At the, at the collegiate level, I was a four-year starter, uh, played multiple positions, two, three, and four. Yeah. Uh, the four probably hindered me more so than, definitely more so than it helped. Um, you know, I think like 900 and like 89 points. So I was like 11 from 1,000. I'm like, that's because I played the four. <laughs> you know? uh, and so over 500 rebounds, you know, six, 16 uh, appearance. That type of thing. Um, at the professional level, I played two years there uh, overseas. I played my first year was tough. I was in Poland playing against Shamika Holesclaws. You know, <laughs> she was like six one. You know, she like backing my little self down, but you know, offense. You know, like all right, I got you back. <laughs> you know, it's like, but then you sit back and you realize you're going tit for tat with your childhood, like right. Your childhood hero, you know. So right. it, it was it was a humbling moment for me playing against a lot of the girls, and some of them are still in the WNBA today. Um, and then my next year, I played in Portugal, beautiful country, um, beautiful, beautiful country. And then I actually, you know, I was usually when you're on teams like that, you're you're gonna be the best most of the time. For, you know, the Americans right. are typically their best players, um, and so I had a really good career. And then. In terms of why I stopped playing so quickly was the first year my uncle was in ICU, so I almost lost my uncle. Oh, wow. um, the second year, Coach, I passed away, and so wow. I'm very, very family oriented. So for me, like that was that was tough, and so I kind of was going back and forth from my mind, like what I wanted to do. I didn't know um, when Coach I passed away. Right? Coach I had always asked me that I want to coach, and I'm just like. <laughs> like not at all like and I literally told her I was like no because you guys have no life y'all always here like y'all don't have no no spouse no kids oh like, wow I'm, like I'm good love and joy <laughs> you know so, you know, sports people yeah so that was, that was college that was college and so when she passed away in February 2009 um I never forget it. I was on my little thing. I saw it on ESPN. Then, of course, people started to try to call before you find out. We had a game that day, a away game, and it just so happened that uh, my agent was coming to my game that day. And so she got me to be able to be home for the funeral and stuff like that. And and just in that moment, hitting me how much Coach I impacted my life as a collegiate coach. Um, and so I didn't get an offer right away overseas. Uh, I and mean, this is. My life is so divinely ordered, um, and I'm realizing that more and more. And so, you know, you're coming off two crazy seasons, leading, score, and assist, and rebounder in, in the league. You know hmm. what I mean? You're on your team right. in the league, up there in the league as well, and you don't get a contract like that. It's like, hmm, what's going on? So, you know, I went that summer. Central North Carolina Central had a camp. Uh, you know, they were, trans they were transitioning from – Division two, independent, and going into the MEAC. And so one of my best friends played there, Casey King, and she her jersey was tied down there. So Coach Joe Lee was like, no, y'all want to come work camp. You know, we don't have no money to pay you, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, I don't care about that. You know what I, mean? I just, I right, just right. Wanna, you know, I like ball. So I like kids, and kids have always been a passion of mine. And so I you know, went to camp, coached the kids at camp, and then – Coach Robinson, Coach um, Jolie Robinson, and at the time the associate head coach Antonio Dickens, uh, not Antonio Dickens, I'm sorry, uh, Coach Antonio Davis, okay, asked me would I mind volunteering. They like like they liked the way that I interacted and talked as a uh, as a camp counselor and asked would I mind coming along and just volunteering for a year until you know I went back overseas. 
Right. I'm just like, you know, sure, yeah, you know, keep me in the game and keep me, you know, you know, keep me in the game and keep me in shape. I'll play against the girls and practice, that yeah. kind of thing. So I did it. And my agent called me in the middle of the year. And I'm just like, I think I'm going to stay. Uh, it was an opportunity. For, I got so used to being able to see my family whenever I wanted to. Um, I hadn't been home in seven years for Thanksgiving. I had an opportunity to be home oh, with wow. my family. My grandparents were getting older. And I and I still were able to combine my passions of youth and basketball. So you know, as a professional, it was just basketball. When you're young, you know, you you on your own path anyway. You're not really right. worried about other people. <laughs> but you know, at the coach I passed away, it it really made me think a lot about my own legacy and what right. I wanted to leave behind. And that's where it started. Um, and so at, at the coaching level, um. Still trying to figure out what level I really want to be at because it's different. Yeah. <laughs> it's different from Division One and even in Division One, all levels are different. You got high rank, I mean, you know, Power Five conference is Division One. You have mid, you know, mid level, and then you have the lower Division Ones. Same thing with Division Two. Same thing with Division Three. So, I'm trying to figure out where it is that I want to be and how can I use my skill and to impact the lives of young women. Um, a lot of young women that I work with are minor- minority young women. They're black young women like myself. And it's important to me that we have representation for these young women as role models and things like that. And people who've actually walked in their shoes to help them fulfill their dreams, even if it's not necessarily with basketball. Because that's, as I'm younger, that was the thing that I focus on. But as I'm older, I do a lot more now. Like I'm also a psychotherapist. Um, I also am a co-founder of a nonprofit organization right here in Princeville, North Carolina, my own hometown. And so for me, giving back is always this, something that has been important to me. So I, I'll say those are things that, to me, also are some of my biggest accomplishments. Outside of, of course, just coaching you know, uh, high academic kids who've got academic honors at NCAA level, conference level, coaching um, young women who player of the game, uh, conference player of the week, a uh, couple of them have gone on to play professionally overseas, uh, you know, seeing them start their own lives and, and that yeah. kind of thing, marry. So that part is rewarding for me. And I now I get and I understand why Coach Al and, and, and her staff didn't have kids. Those were we were pretty much their kids. Right. Um, you know, we won't we were some bad kids sometimes. <laughs> uh, but they loved us. They loved us. They you know, they they supported us and so I, I just want to be a ripple effect of what Coach Yao kind of instilled in my life as a coach. So. Speaking of Coach Yao, tell me what this what tactics or what made you go to NC State? What did she use? I know she was recruiting you when you was in high school. So what led you to say, "Hey, NC State was the spot for me to go"? I think a couple. I think a couple of different reasons. Um, and to be honest, the top reason wasn't basketball. I think most people would have thought basketball. Um, but when I went to NC State, NC State were kind of down. Um, and for me, I want to be a pioneer. Like I, I'm that. <laughs> I'm just that person to say, "Nah, I'm gonna go in there. We're gonna be all right. You know, we're we gonna get back to where right. we were." And hey, we ended up going to the Sweet Sixteen, and the, it wasn't done again until this past year. And I actually was in the gym when they advanced to the Sweet 16 this next time. I could not miss it. Uh, so, yeah, that was that part was in terms of her philosophy, her coaching philosophy and who she was as a person is really what landed me at NC State and just how she treated her players, just her energy. I'm a feeler. And so her energy uh, was huge. I'll never forget uh, I went to my first camp was East Carolina. That was fifth grade, so there was an Ann Donovan. You know, God rest her soul was there. Coach Matt, who actually ended up going to NC State, those two people they gave off that same energy. And so, had they stayed there, East Carolina would have been in the running. Um, right. But they ended up going to you know leaving. I forgot where Coach Donovan went. She might have went and started coaching in the WNBA by that time. Right. Uh, but then I met Coach Al. Went to Coach Al's camp that same summer, sixth grade. I'm mean, sorry, going into the sixth grade, so it was a fifth grade year. Right. Um, and Miss Joan, Miss Linda Joan, yeah. one of my biggest mentors, took me there and, and you know, Coach Y'all said something to her. Miss Joan, like, oh, make sure 
she come to NC State. <laughs> I didn't know that they had this pack behind my back, but you know, because right. Ms. Jones never pressured me to go to NC State or anything like that. But I think people just kind of felt and seen that it would be a good fit for me because of Coach Al's coaching style, her philosophy. They were a family. Like, you go, you see the team. Like, everybody's a family. We call ourselves K Fayal. Like, we're a little sorority. Like, we're all still sisters. And that's the legacy that she built. When you're at a place for 34 years, right. you can build that kind of program and that type of legacy. You know right. what I mean? And that camaraderie in terms of players over generations. So, I'm like sisters with players that played 20, 30 years before me. And that, in terms of networking and things like that, now that I'm old, I'm like, dang, I had no idea what type of treasure and, you know, that Coach Al kind of gave us and opportunities she put us in. So I would say her personality and her coaching philosophy and just her as a person was the biggest draw. And the second biggest draw is because I wanted to go to school for engineering. Hmm. When did you realize that basketball was your love? I was five. <laughs> the moment, the moment where my mom's yelling at me at like nine o'clock at night to come in the house. My brother's mad because I'm dribbling the basketball to church in this dress, um, and I took my basketball purple and gold basketball everywhere. I was about to beat up this guy who was like sixteen, but I'm like, he got my ball. He stole my ball. I know that's my ball. Y'all ain't gonna have my back, you know. Uh, and I still don't. If I see him to this day, I still sigh at him. I'll never forget it. Uh, I will never, and I don't even know if that was really my ball. But that was the only time I ever seen a purple ball, gold ball was the one I had. And all of a sudden, he got one now. That's my ball. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, my stepdad made me fall in love with basketball. I was five years old. That's when I first learned back there in the country in Pine Tops. Biggest crossroads. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that that's when ball was life. That's, it was life then. Yeah, it was life. And then, you know, I went to Red Lee, and I, I dominated, and it was fun. It was fun. Dominating the little boys. That was <laughs> And I was quiet, and I didn't know then what it was, but that's the energy I, I love. I, I love it. I love the the grittiness of it. Right. I, I, I love the piss people off. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so you, got that, you got that Kobe type of dog. I am a Kobe. <laughs> I, I, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, that's my mentality. I am a franchise player mentality. So, So tell me, how do you prepare yourself mentally as you coach these girls now? And also, how you prepare yourself mentally when you was playing the game of basketball, too. Two totally different things because I'm right. in two totally different places in life. Right. <laughs> um, as a player, as a player, I would say high school, I didn't prepare. I just played. It was just talent and love for the game. Um, and I think that in high school, my belief in myself, my arrogance probably, um, you know, when I say arrogance, a lot of people that know me know that I'm extremely humble. You know, and, and I think that driving that right. hunger, but that balance of humbleness to say, you know, I can't just go out here and underestimate. I got to go out here and dominate right? Um, or at least show you that I can dominate. And I can turn it on and off when I want to kind of thing. You know, it's that, that kind of cockiness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, that kind of thing helped me. That was my preparation, I guess, in high school. In college, it was more so of I want to be on the court. So I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work harder than anybody else. It, I was always the one diving on the floor. Always the one doing whatever it took to be a team leader, and you know, to some, and this is something for personal too. It, sometimes to a fault where you don't advocate enough for yourself. So I ended up playing the four. Still didn't matter. I still started all four years, and I'm right. just like, whatever. Is this what the team needs? It wasn't necessarily what I needed for my own career, but it's what coach felt the team needs. So I stepped up and I did it. Um, you know, and so that was my motivation. It was more so of a, um, I wanted to please. You know what I mean? I wanted to make my family proud. I wanted to make Coach Al proud. And I wanted to just simply be the best and do the best that I can. Now, if I could have prepared myself the way that I prepared myself in coaching, I think it would have been a different story. Um, right. Because now it's more so of a mental game than it is a physical game for me. Um, and so that means, you know, I, I really sit down and I do a lot of visualization. I do a lot of intention settings. And I am very cautious about the things that I do in terms of game plans in terms of uh, practice planning that type of thing we do I try to make sure that we we approach the game mentally so we have a lot of mental moments and a lot of teaching in the programs that you know I've been a part of in the programs that I run and we're family and so I'm trying to build what coach out built um, um, you know what I mean and so 
prepping myself now, like I said, will be more so mental and more so sitting than it is. As a, <laughs> as a player, I was a doer. Like, I don't really care about thinking. <laughs> it'll come to me in the moment. I'll just get in the flow and it'll be yeah. all right. Um, because that was my escape. Basketball was my escape. But as a coach, it's more so I have to be more tactical. So I'm at a place where I sit more and I visualize more and I think more of I'm more strategic. As a player, you just go get it. You read it and you react, you know. But I wish I would have had the visualization part as a player more. So especially especially in college for me because I switched positions. And if you know anything about playing a, playing a position that's not really your own, especially when you're in the ACC and you're like 5'9", 5'10". Yeah. You know, it's playing the four, people like Misty Bass from Duke. Yeah. Um, Crystal Langhorn from from Maryland. These girls are in the WNBA first round pick. They're right. like 6'4", 280. I'm like, <laughs> they got me listed at six feet. I'm like, I'll take it. But in reality, <laughs> I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", five, 165 soaking wet, you know? So I'm like, oh, they trying to kill me. <laughs> kill me. So switching back and forth from the four to the three to the two, that messed with me mentally. So, for example, my freshman year, I was second leader and second leader scorer behind a Kodak All American. You know, by my sophomore year, I'm over five thousand. I'm at five hundred points. Um, it, like I'm breaking records on the, at the freshman level and things like that. I'm starting as a freshman, and then I ended up going to the four. Oh, I'm three pointers. That's where the record. I'm like in the record book for three pointers as a freshman. Oh man, I probably didn't shoot very many threes at the four. That's all mental. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wish I would have prepared more mentally at the collegiate level. And I I wish I would have known. We did not talk about, um, we didn't talk about sports psychology back then. You you right. hear it now all the time, but we didn't talk about sports psychology then. If it was sports psychology, it was more so leadership than it was your own mental game. And, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, for that, it's like, everybody's like, you come home and everybody's like, why are you not shooting? Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? And then the freshman year is, why are you, why are you shooting so much? You need to pass the ball. I'll never forget. And this is Ron Mines, and I hope you see yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. And it's nothing to knock him because I think he's a great guy. And I think he was really trying to push and motivate me, but it did the 